Hey guys, another spitballing KSP video with no script or planning from me. Just something I wanted to post due to some stuff that happened. So, you know, don't expect any tight editing or scripting. Just, just some spitballing, some thoughts again. Uh, this morning when I woke up, one of the first things I saw was a notification of a break in the radio silence of the KSP2 situation, uh, but not by any official means. Instead, I was kind of surprised to see a video by Nate Simpson, former creative director of KSP2, posting a video to his personal YouTube channel in what was honestly a pretty tough watch, and I got the sense that he was making this video for himself as much as he was making it for us. It was a pretty honest opening up about his time on the project and the challenges that it faced, and what's next for him. He also confirmed he knows nothing about the current state of KSP2 and who even owns it now, and that he has signed an NDA, which means that he can't share any explicit information with us about what went down with the closure of Intercept Games and the de facto cancellation of KSP2. I debated making this video, to be honest. There's not really a lot for me to add, and obviously there is a link to Nate's video in this video's description if you want to just watch it for yourself. But I felt that I should acknowledge it in some way, shape, or form as one of the content creators that he mentioned in the video. I think that the vitriol that a not insignificant portion of the KSP community holds towards Nate is unwarranted. It's absolutely fair to be critical of the game and even perhaps some of the decisions that upper management, including Nate, made, but I'd never hold an actual personal level of hatred towards the guy. I've met Nate twice now and it's been absolutely always clear to me, and I suspect everyone else that's ever met him or heard from him, that KSP2 was not just a job for him, but clearly some that he cared very deeply about. I remember in February 2023 when us creators got to visit Amsterdam for the early access release event, which was actually my first time meeting anyone on the KSP2 team in fact, and they were all a really passionate group of people. A couple even showed me their Kerbal tattoos. Uh, and Nate gave quite an extended talk about his history with Kerbal Space Program 1, and even showed us some Gmail screenshots of emails he sent to co-workers, uh, imploring them to check out Kerbal Space Program because it's the best game ever, and he ended up being known as the Kerbal Guy in the office, which is not a nickname I've ever managed to attain in my day job, though I don't work with as many gamers as someone that works in game development, I guess. <laughs> Overall, I think Nate's message to us in this video was not an easy one to hear, and I have huge respect for his honesty and vulnerability on display, as this isn't something that's easy to speak openly about, especially with stakes like this and the negativity that surrounds KSP2's legacy legacy and Nate's association with it. It was a message that did hit pretty hard. I've not just followed KSP2's development closely, but I've been proud to be part of a community that has cheered for the team's success, in spite the fact that the game released severely undercooked and was rightfully criticised for its shortcomings. We all know how ambitious KSP2 was with its ideas of interstellar travel and colonies. Seven years is a long time to uh, push the proverbial boulder up the hill, and it's clear that the team cared deeply about delivering something special, even if things didn't turn out as we all hoped. And Nate did address the feeling of you know the weight of his promises and how he felt responsible for delivering. The KSB community is a, uh, a passionate one, and expectations were sky high for the sequel. And this all had a negative impact on his work-life balance and for the team. And hearing Nate's reflections on work-life balance and the burden of expectations was a real reminder of how much pressure exists in these creative industries, especially in game development, and especially, especially when you're the de facto face of the game and a game that wasn't well received by the community. Again, its negative reception was justified. I'm not now going to go back on all my criticisms of KSP2 and repaint it as a misunderstood gem. The thing was broken and it needed a lot of work to make it worth its high price tag. But we do of course know about the behind the scenes meddling that took place and how the game really was not and was never planned to be early access. And there were seven years of hard work, passion and of course eventual struggles to deliver on promises made to the community. I chatted to some members of Intercept and Private Division during those initial first few months of release. I can't name them, I think. I Actually, I know I think I can, as none of them work there anymore, but for the, for the sake of not wanting to jeopardise someone's career, I'm not going to. And all of them were saddened by the state of KSP2's release and the community reception, and they wanted to see the game become what that amazing trailer promised. 
In his video, Nate did provide something of an apology towards people like myself and other creators like Shadow Zone for going radio silent when the whole intercept shutdown thing went down. And honestly, we get it. We knew you were under NDA and that I'm sure you'd love to give a tell-all, but that's just not the reality that we live in. So we understand completely. And honestly, the fact that you're taking the time now to reflect and share does mean a lot. For the record, I've got nothing but respect for you and the rest of the KSP2 team. And I'm pretty sure that's a sentiment shared by the other creators that you mentioned. And you were super cool about interacting with us during the days that you could. It was really awesome when you messaged me saying that you liked my latest video or whatnot. And it's something I, I can't really imagine would happen with games that aren't as driven by passion as KSP2 was. Post Intercept, Nate described navigating the stages of grief and reevaluating his future in a challenging and competitive job market, particularly with regard that he has KSB2's legacy tied to him. He's been reconnecting with the creative process by learning new tools like Unreal Engine and Blender, I think was what he mentioned. And while uncertain about his next steps, he concluded things with his hopes that someone will eventually realize the ambitious dreams of KSP2, and that despite the sadness, he remains optimistic about moving forward and contributing to games in new ways. And I guess that's, um, that's about it. Again, like I said at the beginning, I really wasn't sure if I should make a video covering this, but people have been asking my thoughts, and this is a pretty major event to happen in the world of KSB2, where the only other major bit of news for the past six months was a now-deleted tweet about Donald Trump nominating Jeb as head of NASA. I think it's really important to take a moment to appreciate the human side of game development as well. It's a, it's a wild, unpredictable ride, and the people who create the games we love pour so much into it, to the detriment of their own life balance and relationships with colleagues in the case of Nate. We can be frustrated and upset and even angry about the fate of KSP2, but don't direct your hate towards the wrong people. I'm not saying Nate was perfect in every way and made no mistakes whatsoever in his job as creative director, but he certainly wasn't the reason the story of KSP2 ended the way it did, and he did his level best to make KSP2 as good as it could be. He certainly wanted to elevate it beyond just reskin and optimize KSP1, which is the TLDR of what Take to Interactive wanted wanted it to be. But yeah, that's about that's about all I have to say, I guess. Actual real KSP video coming tomorrow. It's going to be a fun one, I think. But yeah, uh, that's it. Bye.